Welcome to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to make you a better ER nurse. Today we are going over nursing considerations or things you should be doing and keeping track of when your patient is going to get intubated. It may feel overwhelming when you are new, but I hope I can at least help break down some of the basics. Thank you for watching. First and foremost, as always, as we always say, we are proactive, not reactive. And because we are proactive, our rooms would have had been stocked with bag valve masks or ambu bags and would have had suction equipment readily available. Both of these are crucial for intubations as the BVMs help pre-oxygenate the patient and the suction helps clear out the airway, making it easier for the providers to see the cords when they're intubating. Next, we need to ensure our patient is connected onto the monitor with ongoing pulse oximetry, blood pressures, heart rate, and ECG rhythm. You want to set your blood pressures to repeat every five minutes during the intubation to ensure it does not drop. If your baseline blood pressure or the BP before the intubation is already on the low side, giving medications, especially the intubation medications like the paralytic and the sedative, can further decrease the blood pressure. And if your patient is already acidotic and super unstable, it's the perfect mix for your patient to possibly arrest during the intubation. So let's say the BP is low beforehand, like less than 100, the systolic blood pressure. The patient will need to receive fluids or even a vasopressor to ensure the blood pressure does not drop further during the intubation. Of course, everything is based on why the patient is there on a case-by-case -case scenario. For example, if your, blood, if your patient blood pressure is low, but they're a congestive heart failure patient, you're just not going to be giving more fluids because you're going to make the situation worse. So I'll be on a case by case situation, but you're going to keep track of the blood pressure before and then during the intubation every five minutes to see what it's doing. Now, going back to the vitals, you want ongoing SpO2 because you're going to monitor it throughout the intubation, no, notifying the providers and the team who's at bedside if it's dropping. The provider can sometimes get really focused on the procedure, on the actual intubation, and not look at the monitor. But that's why you're there. You're the eyes. You're actively communicating, saying, hey, the SpO2 is dropping. It's 98, 95, 92, 90. And you're actively saying that out loud so everyone can hear. So that so that if the SpO2 is dropping, the provider can stop and reoxygenate the patient before trying once again to intubate them. Again, regarding the medications, as soon as the decision to intubate is made, you need to ask the provider, hey, what meds are you going to use? Which, in other words, is what sedative and which paralytic are going to be used for the intubation so that you as a nurse can get them and get them prepared. Common, so common sedatives include etomidate, while common paralytics include succedocholine and rocuronium. Next, let's ensure your patient has good working IV access. The last thing you want is for your patient to be crashing and the only IV you have stops working. Trust me, you don't want to be in that position. So just simply ensure that it's working well beforehand. If you are going to run pressors, because again, your blood pressure is already super low, try to get something in the, in the AC if it's preferably, but I get it. Sometimes you, the patients just don't have access, so you do your best. But if they are going to get pressors, try to gather all the supplies afterwards for a central line so that the providers can just get all the supplies and put the central line uh, in so that pressors don't stay preferably too long. Now, for ET tube verification, let's talk about that. The first way to verify is a CO2 uh, via CO2 capnography, which essentially is a small square detector that gets connected to the ET tube after the patient gets intubated. And if the detector detects CO2, meaning it's in the right position, the ET tube, it will switch from purple to yellow. Then you also have to auscultate the lungs to listen for, for good air movement, which is another method for verifying placement of the ET tube. The other is keeping an eye on the SpO2 ensure it is not dropping and finally it's the chest x-ray which looks to see how far down the et tube is at times it can be too deep going into the right main stem which will manifest as decreased lung sounds on the on the left lung lobes but 
it's going to be verified by the chest x-ray so again verification includes the the co2 capnography detector listening for for lung sounds on both sides uh, keeping an eye on the spo2 and then the chest x-ray afterwards now after the intubation is done you need to ask one med will be used for sedation and analgesia Sedation and analgesia is so that the patient is not awake while having a tube down their throat, which can be very, very uncomfortable. And they got intubated for a reason, so we need them to be sedated so the vent can help them breathe. Typically, you have propofol and Fent or Versed and Fent that are, that are used for sedation after the fact. After intubation, you're also going to need to place an OG tube, a urinary catheter, and soft restraint. Just ensure you get an order for the soft restraint and that you do assessments on the extremity you place them on so that no damage is caused. The last thing you need to the last thing you need is your patient to wake up for a brief moment, extubate themselves, and then fall back asleep since the meds are still ongoing. Because we know those medications cause respiratory depression. And if the patient is not intubated, hence a ventilator breathing for them, that's gonna be very, very bad. A very important tip is to ensure you are closely monitoring your patient after the intubation as receiving the sedatives and paralytics plus starting them on new additional sedatives can cause them to become very unstable. So keep your blood pressure every five minutes and keep an eye on your cardiac monitor until you see that the patient is responding well and stabilizing. Finally, because intubations can be messy, don't forget to go back and clean up in the room. If the linen is soiled, place new linen, turn your patient, put a new gown, place a Mepilex, place a diaper under them, pick up the trash, and ensure the room looks good. If family were to visit, your patient and room need to look presentable. Thank you for your time today. I hope that I was at least able to teach you one thing. If you want to keep learning, I've listed my favorite ER nursing related books in the description with my favorite being Sheehy's and the case files. As well, please take the time to watch my other videos. Also, if you would like to help support the channel, I have nursing stickers and shirts on Redbubble that you can check out again. Thank you for your time today. And as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive, not reactive.